How's it going everyone? So today I'm going to be focusing a little bit on how my portfolio has been performing but my main focus will be on the news that the UK will be using Huawei for a subset of the 5G network rollout. So a lot of information on that front but as I like to do I'm just gonna give you a little summary of my account. So before I do everyone's aware I invest in dividend based companies. I haven't really been too aggressive in my approach right now but I have been expanding on the types of dividend based companies that I focus on. So I haven't added to any new companies other than the ones you can see in the list below but I have been buying more shares shares so just averaging my way in and recently a few of the companies have not been performing too well so right now my portfolio is down negative 20 pounds i have the result right at the bottom of my screen but this video will probably cut that off a lot of the drops are related to the coronavirus outbreak the likes of the s p 500 dropped by one percent and that was actually quite a drastic drop, considering the likes of other types of viruses have actually caused more deaths. But markets always react very aggressively. They think about worst case scenarios, and I'm all in all not gonna be changing in anything that I do. I'm just gonna be adding to more positions as the months go by. I've always said the lower the price, the more happier I am. So the account is taking a bit of a hit, but it's really not a problem, and I can benefit from that decline in the market. Quick announcement. Are you interested in starting your own investment journey and want to receive a free stock worth up to £100? All you have to do is create an account and deposit £30 or more. Trading 212 is available for European residents also, so head over to the link in the description. Okay, so I now want to move on to this news article whereby a decision was made by UK Parliament to use Huawei's 5G technology. But before I do, I just want to explain the whole concept of 5G. So within the UK, we have a really crappy 4G network system. And so if you are on roaming data, you get really slow speeds. Your connection will drop in and out as well. And I think everyone in the UK can agree that our infrastructure for the likes of 4G and even down to standard broadband is extremely low. It's below the likes of other countries out there, especially those in Asia. And so there is a need to improve the current infrastructure that we have. And so in terms of the 4G systems we have, we actually use a lot of Huawei-based technology. And so for certain companies such as BT, they already use greater than 35% of Huawei 4G technology. So we'll discuss why that 35% is really crucial, but I think we are all in agreement that the UK has massive improvements to make. It's one of those disappointing moments where the UK never really focused on having their own system, their own 5G network. It's always been a case of who do we import from and what is the cheapest price we can make a deal. So the likes of the US, there's a few companies out there that are rolling out 5G. So Verizon, AT&T and Sprint. So there is a chance to buy the products from the US. On the other hand, you have the likes of Huawei, which technically has slightly better technology compared to the US alternatives. And on top of that, the price point is cheaper as well. So the UK has two choices. Now, they actually have a third and probably more as well. But the likes of Korea, they were actually the first to have a 5G system. They beat the US to market as well. But the UK rarely does deals with the likes of Korea. And in this instance, they are primarily focusing on Huawei. And well, they have made the decision to go with Huawei technology for the most part. So the 5G system only helps with respect to that wireless transfer. So taking your phone as an example, it connects wirelessly to a base station that's connecting to a 5G node. But behind the scenes, the key part of having a 5G network is having a fiber optic cable. That is the backbone of the entire system. And the 5G nodes, they just enable 
those really high data speeds. So there are downsides to 5G. Out of all of the different countries I mentioned and all the different companies associated, they all suffer from the fact that you can have really fast data speeds, but the bandwidth, i.e. how close you are to that given 5G node, as you walk away from that node, the speed becomes less and less. And to date, the only solution people have on the table is to have more of these 5G nodes. Now, that is a really brute force approach. It's extremely costly, but that is the plan that all these different countries seem to go with right now. So in my mind, the 5G technology is still not in the rollout phase. For sure, you can go to the US, you can find a random tower and you'll be able to test out the speeds, but until there's a massive rollout, you're not going to have great coverage with a 5G network. So your phone, should it support 5G, will just keep switching between 4G, 5G. So my personal view on 5G in general is that the tech is not at the level it should be. Now for sure you want more people to pay high premiums for their 5G enabled phone and that helps to drive the adoption of 5G and in turn allows the rollout of more of these 5G nodes. But I do feel like there should be more research involved before everyone decides to go full force and have one of these nodes everywhere for the system to work correctly. For the UK specifically, the sole focus should be on having fiber cables, ones that allow for gigabit speeds, and the UK has roughly 10% coverage, which is an absolute shambles. Okay, so to give more background with respect to this article that I'm going to be talking about, it requires information on how Huawei operates as a company. So we all know that China is a communist country. Some could argue it's borderline dictatorship. Companies such as Huawei have often been quite unclear on how they are funded. So there's evidence to show that the government has provided Huawei with money. But Huawei, in their defense, has always said that should the government put any pressure on them to do something that they feel uncomfortable with, then they would much rather close down the company. So in my mind, there is a risk with Huawei having pressure on the government. Whether it's tomorrow, whether it's in a year's time, you really can't predict how a company will be pressured into making decisions they really don't want to make. And so the concern with having 5G technology from Huawei is that the government could ask to spy on individuals. So when our mobile phones or way in the future, when our fridges are connected to the internet, all that personal information could be passed on to Chinese based servers and the government could have access to a large aggregate of information and potentially use it against the UK. That's sort of the worst case scenario. And right now that doesn't appear to actually be the case. Given all the research into how their systems work right now. The latest survey conducted mainly said that there's just a lot of bugs in their system rather than any evidence of a backdoor which allows for this spying to take place. Now that could change in the future and it's totally possible. Now that leads me back to my original point as to why the UK never set up their own 5G system. We always want to import the work from others but in this case, there's always a concern. Whether it's the UK, whether it's China, it always enables the possibility for a backdoor to be put in place unless you trust in your own infrastructure and your own company. So we can see from the article that the decision from the UK is to still have Huawei with their 5G networks, but there is a ban on the sensitive parts of the given network. Now, what's interesting is that with the 5G setup, there's this area known as the core, and it's predicted that in the future, the boundary between these 5G nodes and the core area is going to become smaller and smaller. And that's just because the core section has a lot of old technology that can be replaced and so there is still a worry 
that these sensitive parts will just be replaced with newer technology. So there's definitely a concern there. On top of that, only 35% of these 5G networks can be rolled out. So if we think about a 4G system right now, and generally on the tower sites or the radio masts, they have a piece of hardware which enables the 4G capability. Now the likes of BT, they are using more than 35% of Huawei-based technology right now. So that in itself will cost a lot of money just to swap out the existing 4G network and then on top of that have the 5G network. There is certain situations where you still need the underlying 4G technology and then have the 5G on top of that. So this decision, although I agree that it seems helpful to limit and have other types of companies out there, at the end of the day, you still have 35% and that information that you send through the system could be sent to the likes of China and they could be, you know, monitoring, etc. So limiting the network doesn't really solve a great deal. Information will still travel through a subset of the network and vast amounts of information could still be sent out. And so on top of that, we have some areas that are fully excluded, so military bases and nuclear sites. I fully agree with that. I just worry that the technology that we have in place is going to be pretty rubbish. But it makes sense, right? So if you have a piece of technology that you have any element of doubt, you should still protect yourself from the most critical areas. Now, the downside is that any public information, that's going to be flowing through the periphery. And so customers' data, it's all that kind of information that is subject to being passed to the likes of China, etc. So those are the decisions that the UK has made. Only time will tell on whether this decision was good or not. I feel that if you have any doubt in a given company, you definitely need to research as hard as you can. The infrastructure that is being put in place is so crucial in the long run that you shouldn't make this decision lightly. If I had any control within UK politics, I personally wouldn't roll out a 5G system at all. Like I said earlier, I don't think the system is ready. What the UK should be focusing on is just the fibre technology. Enabling individuals to have faster speeds at home is much more important. This whole concept of IoT or the Internet of Things is really a future goal with autonomous cars, with fridges that tell you whether your cucumber's gone off. It's something that we don't need to race to at the moment. A lot of the 5G work is a work in progress. And so the UK should slow down on that front and just focus on having fiber optics installed pretty much. Now from the political side, I just want to talk about the US-China relationship. So all through last year, a lot of tension with the trade war. And so with the likes of Huawei, a lot of people are unaware of the CEO. His name is Ren Shenfei. And so his daughter, who is still the CFO of Huawei, so she's currently in Canada. She was arrested by the US requesting. And, and the announcement was that there was financial fraud charges against Meng, which is uh, the CEO's daughter. So from the political standpoint, there's definitely a lot of pressure from the US on other allies such as the UK to not do any investment with the likes of Huawei. Now the UK being the UK they want to make their own decisions and that's perfectly fine. You have a situation where the US isn't ready with their 5G network, it's more costly. So if I just scroll down a bit we can see that Huawei previously pledged to invest 10 billion to 20 billion on R&D which is research and development and that was back in 2017. Now, although not mentioned in this article, there was one I found earlier, and the UK pledged in 2017 $16 million on research and development into 5G technology. So that is a few zeros missing from the UK. And the funniest thing is that there's a lot of research in the UK 
And back in 2012, I can confirm that more money was put into the UK from Huawei compared to what the UK government pledged to spend. Now, I know that because I did some work with Huawei back in 2012, and I was also aware of the amount of money that Huawei put into UK universities. So we have an interesting situation where the likes of Huawei is funding UK-based projects, and a lot of people are unaware of that situation. Now, it's not a bad thing. The UK takes investment from a range of different countries, and in return, the research that is conducted has a net benefit, in this case for Huawei. The UK has just lacked in the funding required to have a secure system and it's somewhat unfortunate that the UK is in this situation. So that's all I really wanted to say. To summarise, everyone has a range of viewpoints, whether you think you should take US-based technology, whether you should stick with Chinese technology, or in my case, whether you should just put a hold on the 5G and just focus on the fibre optic side of things. People have a right to be concerned, but hopefully in the future, the UK can look at this try and learn that they really are lacking in some of these fundamental pieces of technology. The decisions of today are going to be looked back on by individuals in the future and they're really going to ask the same questions that we've asked today. Why was there a lack of investment into such fundamentals? And outcomes of today we will only find out in the future. So that's as far as I really talk about UK politics, it's whenever there's some technology involved. Hopefully that wasn't too boring. And with that said, I'll catch you in the next one.